Oh man, Arsenal 2, Crystal Palace 3. A terrible result by any measure. Uh, Arsenal had a fantastic opportunity to tighten their grip on the Champions League qualification places today and they have allowed it to pass them by. A real shame. We had a sort of an hour's grace after Manchester United lost 4-0 to Everton. Theo Walcott among the goal scorers where we could sort of enjoy that and look forward to what it might mean for us. Well, to be honest, what it mainly means is that it's done us a favour. They haven't made ground on us. Um, I, I, I'm not going to go hyperbolic and say top four's gone. I don't think it is. You know, I think we're still very much in this race. I've always thought everyone will drop points along the way. United still have to play City, still have to play Chelsea. Uh, I think Spurs will take third now. Um, pretty straightforwardly. But, you know, I think we are in fourth it is in our hands but we're going to have to win some away games and if we defend like we did today that's not going to happen let's begin with the beginning and the team selection I think a lot of people are really disappointed in the team selection today I am too I think you know I can't really fathom why you know Emery watched Genduzi and Elneny uh, in tandem at Goodson Park and thought let's do that again because it was pretty disastrous there and it was pretty poor today as well. And I actually don't... I, I, I think I'm in a minority in this, but I don't think either of them are poor players. I don't think Ganduzi. I think is a player of significant potential. I think Elneny is a, a really useful squad player and was for much of last season. What I don't think they are is a balanced midfield partnership. Um, you know, we've lost Aaron Ramsey, who's been so key to our form. And what he does is advance the play from deep, progressive passes forward runs neither of Ganduzi or Elneny is particularly suited to doing that Lucas Torreira was available uh, and I think he should have started I absolutely I don't know what sort of knock he's carrying but he should have started this game because Torreira can play as the more advanced midfielder do you remember when we played a diamond earlier in the season he played on the right hand side was breaking forward getting into the box I think Torreira is the closest thing to Ramsey we have um and I, yeah, I, I really think he would have made a big difference today. Palace were always going to be dangerous on the break with Zaha. You know, they started Benteke too, who they, so Zaha sort of could feed off his knockdowns. We had a couple of decent chances, but we gave a, a goal away from a set piece. Poor marking, switched off, Benteke scores. Emery changes at half time. To be honest, I thought he might change it before half time. He brings on Maitland Niles and Iwobi, goes to four at the back. Um, oh, takes off Jenkinson. I forgot to mention he also started Jenkinson at right wing back. Look, he's a very one-dimensional player. And against a team like Palace, who's going to sit in the deep block and ask you to break them down, there's very little Jenkinson can do to break them down. You know, he's not bad with an overlapping run. He's not a bad crosser of the ball, but he's not someone who can beat a guy with the ball at his feet, which is what we ask our wing backs to do. Uh, Maitland Niles can do it Klasnach can do it um, Jenkinson can't so he was withdrawn and Mavropanos was withdrawn he was booked I think as soon as he was booked you knew he wasn't going to last the 90 minutes um, we went to about four because Shelley alongside I can't I cannot even say his name I cannot even say his name Mustafi it's a beautiful day here in London Really is gorgeous outside. You can probably see some of the sunlight here on the face. I've got the birds singing in the garden, but it's tinged for me because I'm like, oh, it's the you know hottest Easter weekend on record. Well, I'm like, well, it's because of global warming, isn't it? The world's burning. Mustafi is like global warming. He is a, a huge disaster that we we're all waiting to happen, you know. And when he has a good game, it's a bit like when we have the sun out in England and we go oh this is great we're enjoying it come on let's get down the park sunbathe have a few beers but all the time trouble is brewing and that's what happens when you pick Mustafi and I don't blame Emery for picking Mustafi he's not got Socrates that's the defender he's got at the moment Rob Holding is out injured for the entire season but surely Emery's seen enough to think I've got to get shot at this guy come the summer He's going to play again between now and the end of the season. He's probably going to play on Wednesday, the way it's going. So I've sort of accepted that. 
I've made my peace with the fact I'm going to have to watch Mustafi several more times. But come the summer, I am done. I am done with Mustafi. It's not funny anymore. It's not a meme anymore. It is diabolical. And what he's playing at on that Wilfred Zaha goal, I have no idea. It's up there with him against Aguero at Wembley last season. He just lets him run past him. I, I, I don't know what to say. And there's no point being like, you should never play for the club again. He's going to have to, in my opinion, between now and May. But after that, no. Just no. And look, the starting eleven was wrong. But the changes at half-time seem to have turned the game in our favour until, until Mustafi's mistake. And then we conceded another one on the set piece, which was very sloppy and quite unlike us, but I think our heads were kind of gone at that point. We were chasing the game. We're not good at doing that. We suffered credit to Aubameyang, scored a great individual goal. Um, credit to Bert Leno, who kept us respectable, I guess, for periods of the game. I think Maitland-Niles and Iwobi made a positive difference when they came on. Iwobi wasn't the guy you wanted that half chance to fall too late on at all. But they did play with sort of tempo and drive and desire, which was really lacking in the first half. There was an apathy. I think we feared maybe that there would sort of be an assumption we would roll teams over at home. And I think there was a bit of that assumption. Maybe that assumption from Emery too, who underestimated Palace underestimated Wilfred Zaha who is possibly the best footballer outside of the top six um, uh, it was in our hands and it is still in our hands but knowing how bad we are on the road it doesn't quite feel that way does it I mean Wolves on Wednesday has gone from a game that we might have been sort of like able to afford almost losing it has become a game we have to win, really. I don't feel too good about that. Um, yeah, I can't. I just can't speak about Mustafi anymore. And Emery did make a big mistake today with his lineup, and I'm sure he knows that. I think he probably underestimated Palace, which is surprising because he must have seen the way they played at City. They've won on the road, I think, nine times this season. Something like that. They've got a very good record away from home. It's propping them up in the Premier League. They're brilliant on the break. And they can defend. Um, and in the first half, we had so few ideas. Just sort of getting Kolasinac in. And I feel like teams are wise to that. He was up against a very good right back in wan today. And even when he did get past him, the composure from him has gone a bit in the final third he's kind of whacking it across the box much more than I would like anyway I'm going to end it there ask us extra tomorrow hopefully I'll have chilled out by then happy Easter or and happy Passover and I hope you find another way to enjoy your weekends other than watching that bye <laughs>